Pelvic floor disorders are very common conditions, and uh, these disorders are not frequently that patients uh, discuss with their friends or with their families. There are many uh, pelvic floor disorders, but most common uh, are pelvic organ prolapse uh, and incontinence. Some people uh, find the analogy of prolapse comparing it to uh, a hernia where you have a muscle weakness and uh, the organs protrude through the muscle weakness. Uh, incontinence, uh, it implies that you're not able to control your urine and obviously in a uh, social en environment uh, where we are, it would be extremely awkward and embar em embarrassing condition where all of a sudden you just can't hold uh, your urine uh, as an adult. It is a multifactorial condition, meaning that it's probably genetics, it's probably your collagen tissue. Uh, as you go along uh, your life, you develop some conditions that you can modify or some not. For example, for women, it's a childbirth. Uh, women deliver children, and this is a big insult on your pelvic floor. As we go uh, later in our life, uh, we, we have further uh, aggravating factors that would contribute to development uh, of the conditions, which would be then obesity, gaining weight, um, and other medical conditions that would put the pressure on pelvic floor. Because there's no one cause of the condition, the treatments are also various. So some conditions would address pelvic floor muscle weakness. It would be either exercises or a special type of physical, uh, physical therapy program. Uh, there are some treatments uh, would restore the anatomy with this, uh, some kind of surgery, and we have various types of different surgeries. And there are some uh, treatments will be uh, medications where we will try to adjust the disbalance between the muscles and the nerves in your body. As I was going along my uh, clinic day, I have noticed uh, that um, my practice was uh, uh, was directed more uh, towards older women. And I was astonished because two-thirds, or at least half of my patients actually were reporting difficulties in basic daily um, activities that we all perform. Now, that brought me to thinking that we don't do these standard uh, assessments on older women with pelvic organ prolapse. So that led me to a further question to, to assess this with more objective measures, which brings me to my current pilot. The second piece of the pilot that I'm also extremely excited is that we want to take a modality, some imaging modality, and we want to assess pelvic floor muscles. As you can imagine, pelvic floor muscles are hidden inside, so not, they're not easily accessible for biopsies or even uh, just examination, uh, a patient would need to undergo pelvic floor or pelvic internal exam. Uh, so we want to take some modality where we can perhaps even look at some of the mechanisms of how and why uh, pelvic floor disorders uh, develop in older women. So we're extremely excited about that as well.